I'm Michelle Beauchamp, owner of The Champ Group, and I am your host of Women Lead TV, which is brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. As an executive director on the John Maxwell team, I love being able to talk about topics like leadership and sales with people who are in business. This show is called Crossing Bridges, where we get a chance to talk about steps we had to take to get to from where we were to where we want to be. In other words, cross the bridge, fill the gap. I'm excited to welcome our guest today, Anita Nygaard. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> you are in for a treat. I know I say that all, all the time because it's true. Anita is the owner of Core HR, and we're going to talk about important issues like human resources, the importance of a strong human resources team, philosophy, policies and procedures, because human resources is important for a business to thrive. Anita, it seems like human resources is really evolving. It is, Michelle. It is. I mean, I feel like from an administrative point of view, mm -hmm. it's really becoming automated. That's right. And what you've said is that that's true. And the truth is critical skills like communication mm -hmm. are so important because if they're not done well, then there can be significant compliance issues That's right. and legal ramifications. Indeed. <laughs> so she's an expert yeah. at this. Anita is an expert. So what we want to do first, Anita, is talk a little bit about how did you get involved in this? Let's start with that. And then we're going to delve into other topics, how people need to be able to talk to their employees and what happens if they don't. So let's get started. Anita, how did you get into human Sounds resources? Sounds good. Well, I came from one of those families where they pegged me early on as the lawyer. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I like to see different sides of an argument. Ah. And I like to root for the underdog. So long story <laughs> short, I really had blinders on for quite a while mm. that I was going to pursue a career in law. That's how I chose my undergraduate major in college. Um, when I graduated from college and got into the world of work, I wanted to start out as a paralegal. Mm -hmm. And I did that on both coasts. It was a great idea because it helped to open my eyes about what the field really was like. And I decided that I wanted to take a different career direction at that point. Instead of getting involved in the issue after it had already happened, mm -hmm. I wanted to be involved the step before and help prevent litigation. Oh, good. You had foresight. That's right. So that was my first bridge. Okay. And I needed to start looking at careers that made sense. Um, where you could be that interventionist and human resources made the most sense for me. So instead of pursuing a law degree, which is the reason why I had relocated from New York to Northern California, I pursued a master's in HR and organization development instead. Instead of being an attorney, you That's decided right. to pursue your master's in human resources. Well, we love That's that. Right. Yeah. You picked an industry, a field, that is going to always be needed. So, this so is good true. for you. Well, and, until, until everything gets automated, right? I guess. Well, let's hope not, because <laughs> we still need people. It is called human resources. We do need people. It's called human resources. And you talked about the fact that the communication skills are important because mm -hmm. human right. capital. That's right. People. That's right. The, the experience is all uh, boils down <clears throat> to it's all between the employee and the manager. And so managers these days have so many different pressures on them. Mm -hmm. Not only do they, are they responsible for the results of the business, like managing the numbers, but they also need to be very mindful of the different employment laws that trigger. Mm -hmm. And in our state, in California, we have so many employment laws that trigger, even with just five employees going up to 15, 25, and so on. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult for a manager to understand all of that and mm -hmm. still be able to be good at what they're supposed to do for the business. Right. So that's where our business partners with small to medium-sized businesses. We can come in as experts, help make them aware of these different laws, what they need to be in compliance with, and help advise them on issues as they arise. Okay. Now, where, where our business doesn't partner with, some, with these small to medium-sized businesses, it really adds some concern about how long they can go without having some sort of expert advice mm. or what they do, how they handle issues when they actually come up. Um, so that, that can be, it can be scary um, for companies that do, that aren't in compliance, the penalties can be staggering. Mm. They could be so expensive That's that they could right. put a business out of business. It could, it could. And if you think about it, how hard that business owners are in 
trying to remain in business and be competitive in the right, market, right. the last thing you want to do is turn over all your profits to a law firm. No, no, that's not how you grow your business. No, <laughs> no, nobody wants to be in business to do that. No, and I want to go back a little bit sure. and talk a little bit more about a bridge that you crossed. Mm -hmm. You lived in Denver, where I'm from, so I always find that's that exciting. Right. right. And then you had an opportunity, you were, maybe you were going to move to the East Coast, but then you chose to move to California. Right. And you said, when we were talking before that, right. you know what? you weren't nervous, you weren't fearful. Mm -hmm. Instead, you were excited. And there may be some people watching now who are thinking, maybe I need mm -hmm. to relocate. Maybe I need mm -hmm. to, to change where I'm doing business from. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about okay. what gave you that excitement over that yeah. fear. It's true. There, there was a good 15 year period where I made a lot of changes. I did some relocation, as I've mentioned, from the East Coast to the West Coast. I was originally going to pursue law school and then zagged, right. decided to get my master's. I landed an internship with Wells Fargo Bank, oh, okay. downtown San Francisco, did that for a few years, then got engaged. Oh, there's a bridge to cross. <laughs> and followed my fiance to Denver, oh, okay. which was booming at the time, this right. was the early 90s, mm -hmm. and uh, landed a great opportunity in HR with MCI Communications, a long oh, distance company at okay. the time. Right. Um, the engagement actually didn't last. Once we relocated, uh, we, we went our separate ways. Oh. <laughs> but that was still a great opportunity for me to focus on my career in okay. human resources and grow in management. Um, I left MCI to take a, a, a better opportunity, a promotional opportunity with another company that was soon bought by Siemens. Mm. So at that yep. point, my career the I, I really the ev the opportunities opened up for me to be able to be promoted work mm -hmm. very hard i had a 16 state region at one point that's a lot um, of states anita and then was promoted into more of a corporate hr management type of role um, i was doing a lot of traveling back east at that point mm -hmm. and the uh, north american headquarters for siemens in the united states was in new jersey they wanted to save on all my travel and hotel expense, so they invited me to relocate to New Jersey <laughs> from Denver. They invited you to Invited me. It was an offer. <laughs> and at that time, uh, I was getting serious with my now husband. Okay. And we were engaged, and our sights were set on moving to Southern California. So that was in the opposite direction that Definitely. Siemens wanted me to go mm -hmm. to. So long story short, I zagged again. So for Zigzag. personal and professional opportunities, we both moved from Denver to Orange County. And um, at that point, I took my last in-house assignment in HR with Broadcom. Okay, um, another name we know. So yeah, a lot of changes during that period. Um, I was with Broadcom a little over a year, uh, only because at that point I got pregnant and we had our first child. Nice. Broadcom wanted me to travel internationally okay. for them as mm. a key HR senior business partner, and it just wasn't the right match for my, uh, my personal lifestyle at that point. So that gave me the opportunity to get into HR consulting, okay. and I joined a firm, uh, an HR consulting firm to do that and see what it looked like to help provide options to clients without being directly involved, directly related to the outcome. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. yet another zag mm -hmm. and uh, a bridge to cross. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say throughout this journey, um, as you mentioned before, even though there were a lot of changes here that are daunting, you're making major personal decisions, mm -hmm. you're relocating, mm -hmm. uh, you're making, making major career changes. Mm -hmm. I found the process really exciting okay. because I knew that I was on the right path for my future self. Okay, so you had a vision yeah. of where you wanted to go. So right. you wanted to be over here on this, at, at the bridge over here, right. and you knew which steps you needed to take to be able to arrive to where you saw yourself, yeah. your destination. That's right, that's Now, right. one thing that you said, which I found intriguing, was that you, when you were at, I think it was Broadcom, mm -hmm. um, right. You chose to be able to, to partner with the employees. This is true. And I was right. really intrigued by that because my experience when I was in corporate, to be quite honest, was that people, employees, mm -hmm. tended to be fearful of human of resources. Of HR, right. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, right? Yeah. And in fact, when, because we didn't always work in the same building, so when I would tell the team, okay, human resources is coming. <laughs> It, it was not good news, right? No, no. Who's, they, who's getting fired? Right. 
<laughs> and sadly, that typically was when right. human resources came, was right. when it was time to terminate someone. Yeah. So what I loved about mm -hmm. your mindset and your leadership qualities is that you wanted to be connected with the employees mm -hmm. because you were interested in helping them improve their lives. Right. So, Anita, what? How'd you do right. that? You went out. Yeah. You got on the floor. You you spent time with engineers. Mm -hmm. You found out what was going on with the politics. Mm -hmm. So, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more. How'd you? How did you do that? And what do you think the benefit was for the yeah. companies and the employees? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, because I chose to become an interventionist, and I felt the best way to do that was to work in human resources. My guiding principle has always been, how do we improve the work lives for the people who create the return on investments for the shareholders? The how do you improve that, right? Okay. And so it's difficult to do that if you're an arm's length or more removed. You mm -hmm. really need to have your finger on the pulse of what their experience is, mm -hmm. what they're going through, what, what gaps they need to bridge, what, what the expectations are. You really need to be in tune with all of this. So. When I accepted the position with Broadcom and Human Resources, I was doing what was natural to me but seemed to be strange and uh, unique to that company, mm -hmm. which was I walked the floor and I got to know the engineers on a first name basis and I got to understand the projects they were working on. I got to see firsthand the internal politicking that was going on mm -hmm. and the infighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I was able to take that information, go to management meetings, and help to illustrate how this doesn't help the company, okay, it nice. doesn't help the individual departments, and it creates divisions which can cause delays mm. and ends up hurting the shareholders. Yeah, not good. None of those are good for the profit that That's the leaders right. are looking for. That's right. And it sounded like to me, you remember to date myself now, <laughs> Tom Peters, many years ago, the book Management by Wandering Around. Sure. So you yeah. embrace that. That's and, right. And I love when you said, you know what, you help them understand the, the possible division that would happen. And in other words, That's just the right. culture that would be completely broken and you are That's really right. big on culture. That's right. Yeah. Huge on culture. Um, the culture in certain pockets was so toxic mm. that you had uh, folks who were gladly taking calls from recruiters because they wanted to find some, mm. some other avenue, some other way. Mm. Um, and so here you've got someone who is very valuable to the company. You've got talent on your team right. that's going to be very difficult to replace, very costly to replace. Right. And if you're not showing the appreciation for it, and if you're not helping people understand where the rewards are when they do perform, mm -hmm. you're going to lose the, the very basis that causes you to be successful in business. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it all goes back to the human capital. Exactly. And Anita, because mm -hmm. we're going to be mm -hmm. out of time in a few minutes, and what I want to make sure mm -hmm. is that we let the audience know what does Core HR do? And mm -hmm. if you can give some, and where to find you, and sure. if you can give a few tips to the people who are watching who are leaders, uh, yeah. what kind of mm -hmm. tips can you give them on conversations they can be having sure. with their team? Sure. Uh, the best advice that I can give is to make sure that you share your vision and your mission with your employees. Help them mm -hmm. understand how their performance on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis mm -hmm. really contributes to the strategic company goals. Give them a roadmap to success. Hold them accountable for them, for, for those making those goals, and reward them when they do meet those goals and when they perform appropriately. When you show that appreciation, the returns come back tenfold, and I think that's an ROI that everybody can understand. That was excellent advice. And where can people find you? We're on the web, corehr.com, C-O-R-H-R.com. We work with small to medium-sized businesses and we help you navigate through the employment landscape, compliance, coaching and advisory, and employment culture. Awesome. I need a great conversation. That time went really fast. So the last takeaway that I got was roadmap to success for the team. Mm -hmm. And daily, you said, not just That's once right. a year to communicate right. the goal of the vision. Right. But daily. So I hope daily you got content. some tips. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Anita. This was so much fun. Thank you, Michelle. It's a pleasure. It was. And thank you for joining. So we will see you again on another segment of Women Lead TV brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. Mm -hmm.